How many star clusters are present in our galaxy? It is estimated that there are around 150 to 200 known open clusters and about 20 to 30 known globular clusters in the Milky Way galaxy. An open cluster is a group of stars that formed from the same giant molecular cloud and have roughly the same age and chemical composition. They are usually found in the disk of a galaxy and they are relatively young. On the other hand, globular clusters are very old and are typically found in the halo of a galaxy. They are tightly bound by gravity and contain hundreds of thousands of stars. It is important to note that these are rough estimates and the actual number of star clusters in the Milky Way galaxy may be higher, as many clusters may be too distant or too faint to be detected by current technology. Additionally, new clusters may continue to be discovered as technology and research advances. What is a star clusters? A star cluster is a group of stars that are bound together by gravity. They can be classified into two main types, open clusters and globular clusters. 1. Open clusters are relatively young groups of stars that form from the same giant molecular cloud and have roughly the same age and chemical composition. 1. They are usually found in the disk of a galaxy and they can contain a few dozen to a few thousand stars. 1. Open clusters are often found in the spiral arms of a galaxy, and are relatively close to the galactic plane. 2. Globular clusters, on the other hand, are very old and are typically found in the halo of a galaxy. 2. They are tightly bound by gravity and contain hundreds of thousands of stars. 2. They are usually spherical in shape and are among the oldest known stellar structures in the universe. 2. Globular clusters are typically found farther away from the galactic plane and have a higher concentration of old stars. Both types of clusters can be used to study the properties of stars, the formation and evolution of galaxies, and the history of the universe. Star clusters also provide an opportunity to study the dynamics of a large number of stars in a single location, which can help us understand the formation and evolution of stars, planetary systems, and the structure of galaxies. What is the merits of star clusters? Star clusters have several advantages, some of them are 1. Star clusters provide an opportunity to study the properties of stars in a single location, which can help us understand the formation and evolution of stars, planetary systems, and the structure of galaxies. 2. Star clusters are relatively close to each other in space, and thus their ages and chemical compositions can be studied together, which can help us understand the formation and evolution of galaxies. 3. Star clusters are relatively simple systems, in which the majority of the stars have a similar origin, age and chemical composition. 3. This makes it easier to study the properties of individual stars, such as their mass, luminosity, temperature, and chemical composition. 4. Star clusters are excellent laboratories for studying the dynamics of stars. 4. The study of the motions of stars in a cluster can provide insights into the properties of the cluster, such as its mass and the distribution of its stars. 5. Star clusters can also be used to study the properties of binary and multiple stars, which are important for understanding the formation and evolution of stars. 6. Star clusters can be used as traces of the structure and kinematics of the galaxy, and studying their distribution and properties can provide insights into the formation and evolution of the galaxy. 7. Star clusters can be observed in different wavelengths, from ultraviolet to infrared, which allows scientists to study different aspects of the cluster and understand the physical processes happening inside them. 8. Star clusters can also be used to study the properties of dark matter, as the distribution of stars in a cluster can be used to infer the distribution of dark matter. What is the demerits of star clusters? Star clusters have several disadvantages or challenges, some of them are 1. Star clusters are relatively small and distant, which makes it difficult to study their properties and understand their formation and evolution. 2. Star clusters are often obscured by dust and gas, which makes it difficult to study their stars and other objects in the cluster. 3. The study of star clusters is a complex field, and there is still much that is not understood about how stars form and evolve in clusters. 4. The study of distant star clusters is also limited by the finite speed of light. 4. This means that the farther away a cluster is, the longer it takes for its light to reach us, and the further back in time we are looking. 5. Star clusters can also be affected by various physical processes that are hard to observe and understand, such as binary and multiple stars, dark matter, and dark energy. 6. 
The study of star clusters also requires large amounts of data and computational power, which can be expensive and time-consuming. 7. Star clusters can also be affected by their environment, such as the interstellar medium and other nearby clusters, and the study of star clusters in different environments is a complex field that is not yet fully understood. 8. Star clusters are also affected by internal dynamics, such as mass segregation, evaporation of stars and collisional processes, which can cause changes in the structure and properties of the cluster over time. History of Star Clusters The history of the study of star clusters is a long and fascinating one, that has advanced our understanding of the universe. Here are a few key milestones and discoveries in the history of star cluster research. 1. In ancient times, star clusters were known as, star clusters, or, star clouds, and were studied for their beauty and for use in navigation. 2. In the 17th century, Galileo Galilei studied star clusters using his telescope and was one of the first to identify them as groups of stars. 3. In the 18th and 19th centuries, Charles Messier and William Herschel catalogued many star clusters, including the famous Messier catalog, which is still in use today. 4. In the early 20th century, Edwin Hubble and Harlow Shapley used star clusters to study the structure and scale of the universe, and discovered that the Milky Way is just one of many galaxies in the universe. 5. In the 1920s and 1930s, studies of the ages and chemical compositions of star clusters revealed that they can be used to study the history and evolution of galaxies. 6. In the 1950s and 1960s, the study of the dynamics of star clusters revealed that they can be used to study the properties of dark matter. 7. In recent years, large-scale surveys of star clusters, such as the European Space Observatory's Gaia mission, have provided detailed data on the positions, motions, and ages of stars in clusters, which has greatly advanced our understanding of the properties and evolution of star clusters. 8. With the increasing capabilities of telescopes, the study of star clusters is becoming increasingly more detailed and complex, providing new insights into the properties of stars, planetary systems and galaxy evolution. Which is the main star cluster? It depends on the criteria for defining, main, star cluster. 1. One of the most famous and well-studied star clusters is the Pleiades, also known as the Seven Sisters, which is an open cluster located in the constellation Taurus. 1. It is one of the closest star clusters to Earth and is visible to the naked eye. 2. Another well-known star cluster is the Orion Nebula Cluster, also known as the Trapezium Cluster, which is an open cluster located in the Orion Nebula. 2. It is one of the youngest and most massive known clusters in the Milky Way, and contains several hundred stars that have formed in the last few million years. 3. Another main star cluster is the Alpha Centauri, which is a binary star system that is the closest to our solar system, it is composed of three stars, Alpha Centauri A, Alpha Centauri B, and Proxima Centauri. 4. In the case of globular clusters, one of the best known and most studied is the Messier 13, also known as the Great Globular Cluster in Hercules, which contains about 300,000 stars. 5. Another notable globular cluster is the Messier 22, which is located in the constellation Sagittarius and is one of the closest globular clusters to Earth and is visible to the naked eye. It is important to note that these clusters are just a few examples of the many star clusters that exist in the Milky Way and other galaxies, and each has its unique properties and characteristics that make them interesting to study. What happened if star cluster went outside the galaxy? If a star cluster were to move outside of a galaxy, it would no longer be gravitationally bound to the galaxy and would become a free-floating cluster. This can happen due to a number of different mechanisms. 1. Gravitational interactions with other clusters or with massive objects such as supermassive black holes can cause a cluster to be ejected from a galaxy. 2. As a cluster orbits a galaxy, it can lose stars due to evaporation, which occurs when stars at the edges of a cluster escape the cluster's gravitational pull. 2. This process can cause the cluster to lose enough mass that it is no longer bound to the galaxy. 3. The galaxy itself could be affected by the collision or merging with other galaxies, which can cause the star cluster to be pushed out of the galaxy. 4. The cluster could also be affected by the internal dynamics, such as mass segregation, collisional processes or the presence of a black hole which can cause the cluster to be pushed out of the galaxy. Once a cluster is no longer bound to a galaxy, it will continue to move through intergalactic space, losing stars as it goes. 
It is important to note that this process is relatively rare, as most star clusters remain bound to their host galaxy for the majority of their lifetime. Conclusion of Star Clusters In summary, star clusters are groups of stars that are bound together by gravity. They can be classified into two main types, open clusters and globular clusters. Open clusters are relatively young groups of stars that form from the same giant molecular cloud, and are usually found in the disk of a galaxy. On the other hand, globular clusters are very old and are typically found in the halo of a galaxy. They are tightly bound by gravity and contain hundreds of thousands of stars. Star clusters have several advantages, such as providing an opportunity to study the properties of stars in a single location, studying the dynamics of stars, and tracing the structure and kinematics of the galaxy. However, studying star clusters also presents several challenges, such as their distance and difficulty of observation, obscuration by dust and gas, and the complexity of star formation and evolution in clusters. If a star cluster were to move outside of a galaxy, it would no longer be gravitationally bound to the galaxy and would become a free-floating cluster, which could happen due to various mechanisms such as gravitational interactions, evaporation, or collision with other galaxies. For more videos stay tuned with us.